Hey y'all, this is Will, otherwise Zelray, and today in Once Human, we're going to be covering the August 1st patch notes in depth. Yes, the patch notes that we'll be releasing tonight, we're going to be covering them as well as we can. On top of the updates since the last patch notes to get you up to date for anything that you may have not read or just haven't cared to read up until this point. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to be talking about are the Mimetic Specialization Memory Fragments. This is a new addition to the game. It sounds like, from quote, you will gain the corresponding Mimetic Specialization effect, end quote, and the fact that we can use three of these per season seems like we're going to have our ten Mimetic Specialization slots as normal, plus three additionals that we can use Memory Fragments for. This is going to make our character more robust. If we do have to reset other Mimetics to get these, it should be known that between levels 5 through 15, 20 through 35, and 40 through 50, those are blocks where only specific memetics can be shown up. So I'm curious if they're going to follow that pattern of use if we do have to remove a memetic to get these memory fragments in our build. With these memory fragments, we can get them at chance when using a controller, and it's going to be a random memory fragment. We can then sell those random memory fragments if they're something that we don't want, or hold on to them to swap with Hive members so you get the best build and have the strongest group of people you can, so people can have a four upgraded furnace, everyone can have eight generators in their base, things of that sort. And the memetic specialization system is super strong and super handy when you are playing in a group because you can absolutely narrow down your focus and then share that gain with everyone else it's a, it's a huge thing another thing to mention is that these will be destroyed at the end of the season they will not be sent to eternal land and because memetics are directly tied to your character level we're going to be getting new ones every single season anyways i don't find that this is a huge deal but it does need to be noted that if you're trading a lot of resources for these near the end of a season it may not be worth the dollar that you're putting into it the next thing to talk about are the upgrades and changes to the highway pursuit game mode the first and ultimately probably the most popular change that they're going to do is the event now starts fixed at 9 p.m server time every day that means you're not guessing when it does start you're not guessing where it is at if it just glitched out or didn't spawn for whatever reason this is going to make it so more players are going to be able to set up and play this event mode because they know when it spawns it is spawning late at night so it's not going to be available to everyone unfortunately it'd be nice if we had a morning and night or maybe a morning noon and night so it's a more major event but it's spread out throughout the day so more people can access it however they did increase the amount of sproutlets that you get and overall reward drops i feel like this is important because when highway pursuit first came out it felt like it didn't give you as many sproutlets as a cargo shuffle and i feel that the cargo shuffle is ultimately a more fun pvp game mode now don't get me wrong vehicular pvp is actually quite an interesting concept but in the sense of once human if you're the driver all you do is drive and if you're a passenger all you do is shoot you don't get out of your vehicle to fight as much as you should be allowed to it'd be nice if it had a little bit of back and forth in the gameplay i feel like more people would find that a lot more interesting but that is something for the devs to look at in the future and not really something to talk about entirely in today's patch notes so going on to the next topic this is alongside events in general you can now click on monoliths, securement silos, public crisis events, and cargo conquests, and whatever other type of event that you can find on your screen, and open their detail screen to see what the rewards are to see if you're interested in doing this. You can also invite people to public crisis events so they have something in chat to click on to bring them to the event instead of having to find it on the map because people do have issues finding things on the map. Sometimes they just don't show up if you're too far zoomed out, etc, etc. The last thing is there's no longer a countdown timer when you're playing solo for bosses or silos. You can just jump into them without waiting for a queue, which you really shouldn't have in the first place. On to vehicle optimizations. Motorcycles have a maximum speed and acceleration boost on the lower levels. And at the higher levels for the ATVs and coupes, you have a higher acceleration and maximum speed. 
That's a big change. Motorcycles at low level feel quite clunky, so this is going to make them feel a little bit more zippy and better. And this gives your four-wheelers the torque that they should have to be a little bit better than motorcycles for what they're good at doing. They also fixed an issue that plagued me for about two weeks now, where if you were in a vehicle, sometimes your W key would just kill itself. I don't know a better way to say it, but your vehicle would be going 80, 90, 100 miles per hour, and it would just stop accelerating and you'd go down to 40 before you really realize it. Then you had to slam your W key a few times and then boom, you can start driving again. So them fixing that issue is big. I'm glad that more people had that issue so it got fixed because it was absolutely annoying. They also added another function where if a vehicle is stuck on terrain, you can hold down the acceleration key to free the vehicle. Another great thing to get unstuck within the game that doesn't make us have to go to a menu or just get out of the vehicle and respawn the vehicle every time it gets stuck on something small, such as like a cactus branch. That was one of the biggest culprits I found for doing this. Other than that, everything in the vehicle optimizations are simple. Nothing really needed to be talked about. They're just fixing things. This next thing will be for the gardeners of Once Human. We're going to be getting a continuous planting function to the planter box. This function will automatically replant with the previously used seed and fertilizer. This is a very intriguing concept because I felt the grow shrooms were supposed to do this. So now maybe the grow shrooms can function truly automatically by replanting with the previous seed instead of having to pull it from their inventory, give it back to them by hand, etc., etc. If not, I'm I'm somewhat curious how much hand holding this requires. This will be very, very nice for those people trying to get deviated aloe or deviated saffron because they're elemental damage users and they absolutely need more materials for their food than a lot of the weapon damage players out there as well. We'll see how this actually plays through. I'm curious to see how this function interacts with the grow shroom and if it feels cohesive enough to make both of them feel better. On to combat optimizations. They're adding a few things here. Most of them aren't super significant. However, we do see a couple things that are of note. Certain kinds of damage in PvP mode were not affected by the gear build, which means that certain types of damage were going through our defenses, which made those guns feel overly strong. And in PvP, especially in a free to play game, you need everything feeling fun and appropriate. There needs to be response time to guns when people are outright destroying you in milliseconds. You can't react to it and PvP starts to wane in its fun levels, unfortunately. So hopefully this will fix that. The second thing is they changed the rules for bounce target selection. Blackwater, which is what your prime war bosses kind of spawn out of and other enemies uh, live in were being targeted by bounce it was kind of a funny interaction but overall this will make bounce potentially weaker if they're using things like the prickly dance pants or tattoo pants whatever they're called that allow you to bounce back and forth between targets even more so we'll see actually how that turns out i really wanted to play a bounce build i felt like it was too weak in the beta and i really wanted to make something work there's a few things with bounce they still need to change i feel they allowed a weapon inspection function that can be accessed from the action wheel. I'm very curious to see what that means. If we can inspect other people's gear in some weight, that'd be amazing. Because when you see someone playing well, you want to know what they're doing. And we don't have currently a way to do that outside of asking people what they're doing. On to the wilderness optimizations. The only thing to really talk about here is that construction is now forbidden in the vicinity of the Scarecrow at Ripple B Market. I wish that they added on to this because people are building on top of morphic chests. So people who are hunting for morphic chests cannot actually get to that morphic chest without swapping worlds over and over again, finding someone who has not built on top of it. That would be just a nice uh, peace of mind change that would make things easier for everyone who are hunting for all the rewards that you can find on the map. On that, they optimized the movement of the Wanderer so it can move around easier. And it also added a camera height option in the settings, which is amazing. This means that you can drop it below your shoulder more or higher up so you get a better field of view of the terrain around you, depending on your own play style. There were some interaction art and 
uh, special effects optimizations that are just simple things that they're fixing. They added a new trade option for Nisa. This is the jellyfish lady that you find in the town. You can buy a loot crate with sproutlets, and this will allow you to potentially gain acid, barreled premium fuel, start a source, or a legendary mod, which is really, really nice if you need to find a way to hunt for more weapon and mask mods. However, I don't know if these will allow you to get Prime War specific substats, and in which case, you can just farm for the mask mods and weapon mods more effectively as long as you have enough controllers. I guess this is a fallback if you lose your controllers and need to find these mods nonetheless. Next, they added some deviation interaction optimizations, um, specifically with the securement unit, so you don't need to be jumping into the deviation menu every single time you want to do something. You can now sync your deviation to your cradle easier from the main securement unit. However, we do have a loadout system. If you don't know about the loadout system, if you're looking at your gear, it says save by, I'm pretty sure when you press H, that brings out your loadouts. It'd be nice just to have our deviations saved to our loadouts where we wouldn't really need to interact with these securement units as much as we should have to especially if we're out in the field changing our builds to suit what we're doing and continue our gameplay loop a little bit more efficiently but that's just my opinion they added character control and camera optimizations as well as some narrative task optimizations as well as to make it easier to find all purchasable items at traders in neutral settlements items sold at claire shop are now included in the settlement shop which means the main vendor of the settlement that's actually a pretty big change and it will be helpful for a lot of people just making sure that they have bought everything they possibly can they added some cosmetic changes. One, there's more hair color presets that you can use on your character. And secondly, for result screens on any sort of instance that you go into, including Prime Wars, you have a way to see who did outstandingly well, and they seem to be congratulated at the end of the instance so that they are rewarded not only with, with loot, but praise. Not a huge thing, but but interesting that they changed that. The next change was something I was curious about, is they optimized the Manaba scenario on PvE servers. New server-wide tasks and rewards have been added for Phase 5 of the season. Currently, we only have this really lackluster world event that you shoot tentacles, they die, and you retrieve loot. I really wanted at least a special thing to drop from this, but if we are getting new tasks and rewards, I'm okay with this change. It was something that I just felt made phase five less interesting than it could. I mean, we get pro modes, we get men's Devoren, we get Leah labs, we get a lot of stuff, but we didn't really get anything for the actual main event and highlight of the scenario, which is mana bus. So I'm glad that they changed this as well. Now we have a big block of text that is important. We have all the August theme events. The month of August is apparently the Forgotten Summer, and one, we're getting a new login event on August 1st, the 8th and the 15th, special rewards will be unlocked, and that includes cosmetics. They can be claimed any time before the event ends on September 4th, so we have a whole month to collect these. We get a Wilderness Express event starting on August 15th where we can race through the wilderness as a team or alone and earn a rating for mileage and collisions achieved, attain the required rating to claim rewards including star chrome, big thing, and limited edition cosmetics, which is a fulfilled wish vest. So we are getting some interesting things that are changing up how we play and different ways to play. I'm very interested in anything that includes star chrome because that's the lifeblood of the game currently. We also have Secure on Site, which starts on August 22nd, which is during the event, defeat enemies to earn loot crates, which may contain specimen cards. Collect specimen cards and fill the specimen encyclopedia to obtain rewards. I love creature collections. I wanted to collect all the deviants earlier because I wanted to fill my collection book. This gives me something to really look forward to, so I'm curious to see what this will include and entail. With the next thing, we have new shop arrivals. We're getting a an epic quality, a purple quality outfit. 
and it will be a discounted steam pack we're also getting a neon series of epic weapon cosmetics for the socr the mg4 and the kv sbr and other popular weapons so they didn't include everything but a new set of weapons especially for the last valor which a lot of people are using should make it interesting i'm curious to see how bright and blaring these are they added the city vending machine cosmetics for the vending machine it is the first facility cosmetic to be available and comes in three colors so that means we can change the look of our vending machines in the game to give them some flair this is really cool that they're adding facility cosmetics it's something that fallout 76 did and a lot of people enjoyed that to make a themed camp hopefully we'll be able to do that for our territories as well they also added the sunny coast living room furniture set so we get a summertime beach house living set which sounds pretty cool I, I might want to get that depending on how it really looks i'm enjoying these small little cosmetic packs they're adding a lot i feel that this adds interest and intrigue in general to the game for people looking to spend money which this is a free to play without any pay to win features like how are we going to be able to support this game they're giving us a lot of options which is really cool to see the next is a big block of bug fixes. I won't spend much time on this. Some of the most important ones are that if you were in a pollution zone and moved to a normal region, your deviant energy generators would not work but still display the animation that they were. A lot of confusion was there. I've even heard about that one. We fixed the display issue that occurred when placing blueprints while using flight mode in Eternal Land. I personally had this issue and I didn't understand what was going on so it's, it's good that we have that fixed. And also they fixed hydraulic generators in general and overall made all the actual workings of the game visually displayed rather than causing issues and confusion. They also fixed navigation issues, which I have seen. Having navigation in a game is important to make sure it works because people will rely on it when they want to be lazy. And it does take longer to route out, but if you don't give us a route, what are we supposed to do? Like we just want to get to the next place in line and get going. They did mention a lot of combat fixes, yet probably the most important one is, is that your crossbows calibration blueprints cannot be disassembled. They now can, I'm glad, because I have about 10 blueprints that I don't want in my inventory and I can't do anything with them. In other game mode fixes, and this is the last block that we really have to go through, is they fixed an issue with the Shadow Hound in Prime War that would make it get stuck in the air, which effectively killed your entire progress in the prime war and you couldn't complete it nor have yourself be defeated so you can start the timer for the next available prime war they also fixed an issue with the prime war where if you tried to attempt to teleport in you would get stuck on the edge of the map because they wouldn't have space for you they are also fixing the fact that deviations that dropped from ex1 were dropping in duplicate or triplicate and that's going to be a single one now so we're not going to have a ton of atomic lighters they also fixed in Securement Silo Psy that we can no longer get the upper world spawn in PvE scenarios and in Securement Silo Theta that we can no longer get Dr. Teddy because they were now spa they were spawning in the wrong scenario. Now everything should be spawning in the correct scenario. I'm not sure what will happen for those of us that already have Dr. Teddy and maybe already have upper world spawn. Um, hopefully they won't be deleted from our inventory, but if so, I guess that's the way it is. Along with other deviation fixes, Mini Wonder was causing a few weird issues. It would target and absorb teammates' bullets in its range, which means that you cut the DPS of your entire team if you had the Mini Wonder out, so that is fixed. In PvP, Mini Wonder was not defending against shotguns appropriately, so if you did use it as a you know a safety feature it, you would still get run through which is never a good feeling and finally when you were trying to reload while trying to summon a deviation back you could not do that so now they're allowing that to be fixed so that feels a lot less clunky beforehand you had to reload and then get your deviation back or the other way around now it's just more simple with all that, that's everything on the patch notes. This patch note drop was huge. Sorry that it did take so much time to go through. However, we're going to quickly flip into other things of note that should be talked about in the news up until this patch note itself. 
The first thing to mention is that there was a delay in the cross-character paid content sharing for the same account, which means if you have a character on two different servers within your account, whatever you bought from the shop would not switch between the two as it should and they want it to. This stems back from when the game launched that they only wanted you to make one character per account. People had a lot of backlash, so they opened this up so that you could have multiple characters on one account. Yet, at the same time, this is probably why they wanted to hold off on that because they didn't have full functionality ready to go. To apologize for the delay, they are giving everyone who is playing an upholstered storage chest formula, which means we get a new storage chest look to be used in our territories, which is something cool that I'm, I'm glad that we're getting some sort of formula, right? With that, hopefully they find a way to streamline these bigger fixes to be quicker done. However, I also get that there's so many things to fix. They had to prioritize things in a way that's meaningful. And while people do want their money to be more efficiently spent, there are some other things that are huge and need to be corrected first. Almost every day, there's a patch for one human that fixes a whole bunch of different things. So let's just go over some of the most important topics of those. On July 27th, they fixed a territory purification interface issue where they spawn the star chrome that would drop in territory purification within the actual device itself rather than a blob outside of that. Most people have not realized that yet and run around like crazy thinking that they're going to lose their star chrome. Don't worry, it's just in the device. You just have to go over there and click on it and it will give it to you. On the 26th, they fixed an issue with the festering gel deviation that essentially was healing too much, so they brought down how much it could heal you at once. This brings it more in line with the Dr. Teddy, so that the two healing deviations are on par with each other, which I think overall is a good thing to do. On the 25th in Prime Wars, the Secret Servitor's lightning skill was abnormal and would deal a ton more damage and ruin people's attempts instantaneously. We found ways to work around this if everyone was coordinated, but for those servers that weren't as coordinated, this was a big issue and I'm glad that they fixed that. On the 24th, they fixed issues with while talking to NPCs that you could still be attacked and killed by monsters. They added this as a new function in the launch where you could not be attacked in the closed beta test 3. You could absolutely get killed while talking to an NPC. Apparently, they didn't fix this in all instances, so the flag just wasn't written correctly. That was one thing. The other thing was that Securement Silo Alpha would have bosses get stuck in walls where you could not complete the silo at all. Two big fixes that day. On the 22nd, they fixed an issue with loot crates in the Prime War, specifically the third crate that you get for the max amount of points that you should try to achieve, not containing battle passes for the next difficulty level. So if you're playing in easy mode to get to hard mode, you'd have to get 1,000 points. For hard to pro mode, you need 1,200. For pro to nightmare, 1,300. Now that's all fixed, and we have full opportunity to get into the next mode. On the 20th, they fixed an issue again in Prime Wars that affected Gatling cannons. They were firing about half the distance as they should have, which caused a lot of people to not even be able to hit targets that they were aiming for. Fixing this makes Prime Wars a lot easier and more responsive for most players. A great fix there. On the 19th, they finally fixed an issue with the Light Forge Metal Transfer event to actually work as intended instead of seemingly eating your metals. And on the 18th, they fixed a few issues with the boom boom where it was making people misunderstand how to use the gun appropriately. There are still some issues within the game as far as translations are concerned, so hopefully they get to those as well as soon as they can. But overall, people are working around those just fine. The next thing they said is that anyone who had territory anomaly issues, aka your territory would disappear, you would not be able to use your territory, you would not be able to move your territory, or you lost all your storage crates within your territory, all those should be fixed and if you were waiting for a fix like that, you can actually enter the game and be able to use your character and territory appropriately. On the 26th, they talked about combat optimizations in general and character and control optimizations as well. In mid-August, we should be receiving another patch that addresses some clunkiness within our characters. This was mentioned on the 26th of this month. 
On the 24th, a ton of people were banned once again for cheating and malicious play styles. So this is just a standard operational announcement about the fact that they are conducting 24-7 monitoring to try to detect any abnormal activities to make sure that everyone is playing fairly and appropriately so most people in the game have as good of a time as they can. The people who aren't are the cheaters themselves and they should be removed anyways. And with that, we went through 20 minutes of the patch notes, talked about everything worthwhile, and about five minutes of everything happening up until these patch notes. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully you were able to learn some things you might not have known and understand which direction the game is going. Does the game need more work and more fixes and more patches? Absolutely, there are things that don't make the game perfect in any light. However, seeing how much time the development team puts into talking to the players and giving us notifications and updates about what they're doing makes it seem like they do care and they are listening and they are fixing things as quickly as they can in their priority order this overall makes me feel like you know the game's actually going to go in a proper and good direction yeah the first season might be a little bit boring for a lot of people who have played through closed beta test one closed beta test two and closed beta test three and we're waiting for new content and one thing that they did not tell us which i am a little bit annoyed about is any information on when the next scenario is coming out and when we're going to be able to play it what we're going to be doing from phase six onward we do need some information on those things and i hope that they do come out with those soon so that we can be well informed and understand how this scenario cycle will work i think that's the biggest question mark in the game currently and most people are really worried and concerned about you know, if this takes too long to come out, will people stop playing the game? Will the population dip? What's going to happen? All those are valid concerns. However, I just want to hear something from the devs themselves about, hey, this is the date that this will come out and this is what to expect. With just that alone, I think so many people would be properly satiated about what's to come. But I feel there's a lot of question mark and because there's a lot of question mark and general confusion, people are misinforming others and causing a lot of chaos that could otherwise simply be quelled by telling us something. And it feels kind of weird that they're not, but I'm sure they have some reason, but it doesn't feel good currently. With everything said and done, thank you for listening. If you have listened this far and enjoyed this type of content, every time there is a patch note drop, I go over the patch notes and everything up until those patch notes to try to get everyone caught up to pace. With that, later.